Ron is going to get started. Oh, hello, everyone. I'm your host, Ron Booth, and I'd like to welcome you to Citizens Conversations with the Candidate. I want to remind everyone that early voting begins on October 16th, and it runs through November 3rd. And of course, Election Day is on November 7th. And at this time, I'd like to introduce our moderator for this evening, Ms. Yoshina Colbert Bradford. Yoshina? All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Booth. I'm Yoshina Colbert Bradford, your moderator this evening. Thank you and welcome this evening. Again, as I mentioned before, we wanted to just apologize, but also just really thank uh, the candidate, Mrs. Angel Gaines Dingle, uh, for the inconvenience in allowing us to do a double night tonight. Um, we do appreciate that. We know she was supposed to be last week, but we wanted to make sure we got in District 1 all this week uh, with the emergency that I had. So thank you. And just a, few, just a few ground rules. Again, just be respectful. We're going to make sure that everyone is able to ask their question. You can definitely raise your hand and come off and ask your question, or you can put it in the chat. Secondly, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the candidate. After I do the introduction of the candidate, they will have two minutes to go over whatever they like to talk about uh, and introduce themselves, their platform, whatever they would like you to know about them. Next Myself and Mr. Booth, we will ask a, start the flow, ask a few questions, and then lastly, we'll open the floor to the citizens. And at the end, five minutes right before we get ready to close or a little bit before, we'll have the candidate go ahead and reiterate anything they would like you all to know about them, their platform, and how they would like you to get in contact with them. And we'll get started. Good evening, candidate, Mrs. Angel Gaines Dingle, welcome. Oh, hello. How it are you guys? We're good. We're good. Thank you for joining us this late night. You're welcome. You're welcome. And just to get us started, you have two minutes. Tell us just a little bit about you. Uh, my name is Angel Gaines Dingle. As you all know, I'm originally from Orlando, Florida. I've been in the South Fulton area for over about 15 years um, I've been in the Sandtown area. My daughter actually played um, softball at Sandtown back when she was in middle and high school. Um, and I am here to give you guys all the information you need about me, answer any questions that you may have, and just go from there. All right. Awesome. Well, we'll get started. I'll shoot the first question. Just tell us a little bit about your platform. Okay, my platform, what I really want to work on is public safety. I know that we have an issue with the crime rate in the city of South Fulton, not just um, District 1, even though I'm running for District 1. Um, majority of the crime is done in District 5 and 6. So I definitely want to focus on getting a better gauge on the crime and see what's going on. I do want to um, work with Parks and Recs. I do want to implement some youth services inside of the Parks and Recs program so that we can get the youth off the street and get them something more to do because right now they really don't have anything that can gauge them and get them engaged in the community and do, be productive citizens. Right now, the crime rate is really bad. And a lot of it comes from the young guys walking up and down the street in the middle of the night, stealing cars. So I definitely want to focus on that. I also want to focus on economic development. What I really want to focus on is bringing sit-down restaurants in the city of South Fulton. Um, currently, I go to Buckhead or sometimes I go to Camp Creek. I go to Alpharetta to eat. I want to be able to spend my money where I live, which is the city of South Fulton. So I do want to work on that. I do also want to work on to see what we can do about getting a hospital built within the city of South Fulton. I know we're getting warehouses built and apartment complexes and subdivisions, but currently we as residents have to go outside to get care when we need it. We have an urgent care, but we need a bigger facility for us. Um, those are my main platforms and the main things that I really want to work on. Absolutely. I think I'm going to let Ron ask his question. He asked to all candidates. Yes. Um, Ms. Gaines Dingle, um, Please name for us two things that you really like about the city of South Fulton and two things that you don't like so much. And take your time. 
The two things that I do not like so much, I'll start there first. I do not like the bad name that the city of South Fulton have. And I want to be a representative that changes that for the city. Um, the second thing that I do not like is that I have to drive other places to go eat at nice restaurants. I would rather spend my money in the city that I live in. Um, those are those are two things that like grind my gears. Um, what I really enjoy about living in the city of South Fulton is I love the school district. Um, my kids currently attend Randolph Elementary, and I can't say enough about how involved the teachers are and how involved they are with the community and stuff of that nature. So I have to say I really enjoy the school districts in this area. Very well, thank you. I'm going to start with the chat. We had a few questions from the previous. Um, in District 1, this came from Connie Branch. How would you, um, I would like to know, how would you represent the city as a whole and not versus just as your district? Well, for one, I am running for District 1, but I am running for the city of South Fulton. And I think what people fail to realize is that even though you're living in one district and you are doing meetings and talking to the residents in your area, you have to talk to the whole entire city to find out what needs to be changed. Because what I may implement in District 1, somebody in District 4 may not like it. So we need to get the information from all the residents, not just the people that live in my district, because at the end of the day, District 1 through 7 votes the candidates in. And because they do vote the candidates in, that means that all of us have to work together cohesively and collaborate together and come up with a plan that really affects the whole city, not just my district. And previously I've asked, what do you feel about the real estate and our home values here uh, in the city of South Fulton? Do you think they've increased? Do you think they could increase more? What are your thoughts about real estate overall? Overall, I think... Real estate is expensive right now. I think no matter where you go, whether it's in the city of South Fulton or wherever, it's high. Um, I do not know what we can do to bring the value down. The only places that I know of that has the low housing market are rural areas. Um, but as far as the city of South Fulton, I do think that the housing market is high right now. Okay. Um, and I asked this question to the previous candidate. If you could choose three people that you would hire for your team, who would they be? And let me cl clarify this. They don't have to be an actual person, but what would be the occupation and why? Um, If I had to choose three people to work with me, like random people or. No, just the occupation. Like, who would you hire? You have to have a team of people to help you. You're just really the face. So if you have a team of people behind you, you know, who would you hire and why? Oh, God. Um, the first person I would hire is probably a publicist. And the reason being is so that I don't do anything or slip up and say the wrong thing. They can pull my coattail and say, hey, you can't do that or you can't say that or whatever to make sure that I don't make the city look bad. So I would definitely hire a publicist. Um, I would more than likely hire an accountant, a CPA person, that they can make sure that the money is in order, everything is intact, because I don't want to go to jail. That ain't for me. So I will make sure that I hire an accountant so that we can make sure that all the funds are in place and where they're supposed to be at. Um, and the last person I think I would hire is an amazing photographer. And I will hire a photographer so that they can capture all the moments of all the work that is being done in the city of South Fulton. Thank you so much for that, Ms. Gaines. You're welcome. Um, Kayla Lewis asks, what, with the time you have lived in the city of South Fulton, what have you done already to assist with impacting the city and the community? I think that was a good question. Um, what I've done, I've partnered with um, a previous council member, which is Dr. Mark Baker, and we've created the Justice League. And what we have done is went out in the community and we have um, fed the community with boxes of food. I've also partnered with um, a friend of mine. She has a mentorship program and she lives in District 3. She has a mentorship program where she mentor young ladies at her home. And the program is called Wifey Me. So I've assisted with that within the city of South Fulton. 
I also have done work with the Promise Center and some of the people that are there, you know, they have one on Camelton Road and one on Metropolitan. So I've assisted there and helped them out with some of the kids that live in the area. I've also went to and volunteered at a senior senior um, center and we have uh, we did coffee and conversations with them just to figure out what they want within the city and what's going on. So those are some of the things that I do now before I even decided to um, run for city council. Awesome. We have a question with a hand raised. Uh, looks like Mr. Snellings, go ahead. Yeah. So at the city council meeting last night, there were um, th there were three. Uh, I'm sorry. In District One, there was two businesses that applied for a liquor license. They were denied because of the type of establishment that there was. Um, they were the city ordinance prevented uh, th them from receiving an alcohol license. In okay. District 3, in District 3, there was a cigar bar. And with that cigar bar, they were requesting an exception to the to the ordinance. So should we be giving businesses across the board any exceptions? How do you feel about that? Um, I was actually there last night when I heard that. And I do think that we should give, if we give one business an exception, we should do it for others. Um, being that those two locations on Fulton Industrial were in, and incorporated to the city of South Fulton, from what I heard last night, they did pull police records and the police record did show that they had limited of crime at those two establishments and they were selling liquor at the time. So I did not understand why they were denied and the cigar bar was actually given an extension which record shows, and they had the information in front of them, showed that those two locations did not have a high crime rate. So I I wasn't understanding that part of it, but I do think that if you do it for one, you should do it for others, especially if you have the proof in front of you that shows that they're not a bad business and they haven't had a killings and murders and women being raped or whatever the case may be. So I do think that it should be straight across the board for all businesses. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Another hand raised, Sylvia McCoy. Good evening. I hope y'all are doing well. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Part of the issue with our current city council is the way that they communicate with each other and the way that they communicate with our constituents. Would you please speak to your approach to um, working collaboratively when there are differences of opinions? and how you would approach notifying us and getting the word out to constituents if you are elected? That's a great question. Um, the first thing I have always known, since I work in corporate America for a Fortune 500 company, and I know that effective communication is essential to being productive in anything that you do. I am very big on communication. I am very big on emails. And if I am elected, I will be putting, sending out emailers so that the residents in district one can know what's going on. I will be seeing how can I get it in the um, Soul Food magazine that comes out as well. And I will be sending, if there, I have email addresses, I will be sending it via email as well. I know that um, city council do have town halls. So anytime a question is brought to me at town hall, if I do not have the answer for you at that time, I will let you know that I will research it and get the answer back to you. Um, that, so I think that the communication with the current council right now is I feel as though they, everybody feels as though their district, is they're the mayor of their district. Um, they feel like what goes on in their district is their decisions. Nobody else can tell them. But I do think that even though I'm running for district one and if I get in the seat in district one, whatever someone in district six or say four tells me and say, hey, we need to implement this then that's what I would do. I would definitely do that. There was an incident where um, they had an issue about Veterans Day. And um, that conversation went on because nobody wanted to budge. And I just feel like if you're doing a Veterans Day, just do it for the whole entire city. Do it as one big city and make it a something that you do every single year for the city of South Fulton. Great answer, thank you. Another question that came from the chat, as a resident of the area, I'm really concerned about apartments they are building by Westlake. <laughs> it's already congested area and our schools are already overcrowded. What would be your plan going forward to ease these problems? 
Um, I'll say this. Uh, my children attended um, Premier Scholar right there in front of the apartment complex before they even started to build them, before Publix even started being built. And it was already congested over there. So when I saw the apartment complex come up, I was shocked. I was like, did they do a traffic study on this? Why are they building these apartments? How are everybody going to get out? It's already hard for people to, it's easy for you to ride up Camelton Road, but coming from the from the daycare and coming from Westlake, it's hard for people to get out at that at that area, at that light. So I was I was very concerned about that. That's something that I probably would have not voted on um, due to the fact that I've been sitting there in traffic um, waiting to get out from the daycare. I've been waiting to turn to go into the daycare. So the traffic over there is horrible. And being that, you know, we're getting a, a Starbucks and a Chick-fil-A, anybody that drinks Starbucks knows that it's crazy early in the morning, 10 o'clock Saturday morning. So it's going to be really bad over there. Um, I do think that they should put a light somewhere um, right there where you coming out of public set. I know it's really close to the light right here on Camp Creek and Campbellton, but something needs to be done right there at that that intersection because getting out is is horrible right now. So I wasn't in agreements with the apartment complex due to I've been sitting in that traffic before. Absolutely. And you mentioned, um, so before they mentioned the Westlake School, so just to follow up one of the other questions, does City of South Fulton have a role in building schools or is that a, a function of Fulton County? And then I'll get a question from the citizens. Okay, that would be, uh, um, that would have to come from Fulton County from the school district. And how I know is um, I've been involved with, with the PTA for many years when my kids were younger. I've sat on boards to help hire um, principals at middle schools. And I've also was the only female that sat on the board to help hire a head football coach. So, um, yeah, that's how I know that that information would have to come from the school board. Absolutely. Mr. Snellings? Yeah, so at the council meeting last night, Camelot was an issue at the, at the council meeting. Um, what ideas do you have to um, make Camelot safer and make sure that does not come into District 1 and other areas of the city? Um, the first thing about Camelot, when I, I've been hearing a lot about Camelot, I read a lot on the news and I have um, saw the parent that came in last night that lost her son. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that was her second child that she lost in Camelot. I just feel like if um, council was very present in Camelot and was very present with what's going on with Camelot, what happened last night wouldn't have happened. I think that... Um, the mother had a legitimate reason to be upset. If I know that there's killing, let's just say if I'm in District 5 and I know that there's killing, I'm going to gather all the parents that have lost children in that area. And I would want to talk to them to figure out what do you think needs to be done? We need to talk to the residents and we need to talk to the constituents because at the end of the day, they're the ones that vote you into office. They know what needs to be done in, in the area. And if you're out there long enough, you automatically know that that area is really bad. I'm I'm shocked that it's still up, but I know that it's still up because people actually own those instead of renting them. But I think the council need to come together as a whole. And I know that um, Corey Reeves is the council for that district. I think that he needs to come together with Helen because the parent Helen did say that she got her crime rate down from 100% to 5% in the three years. So whatever she did, we they need to work together and collaborate together to make sure and seeking that happen in Camelot. All right, thank you. Now with the number of warehouses that have gone up when the city has come, what are your thoughts about warehouses? What should have been done? What could be done? And what would you do in the future to make sure we do not receive any more warehouses? To make sure we do not receive any more warehouses is to make sure that I listen to the residents in the area. And I know that a lot of people don't want a warehouse in their backyard. I don't want a warehouse in my backyard. Um, what I think should happen is warehouses need to go in industrial areas where they're where I think they're supposed to be. Oakley Industrial, Fulton Industrial, of that nature. 
Um, I don't think that anyone should have a warehouse in their backyard. They didn't buy their house to have that warehouse there and, you know, have the traffic and the congestion. Everybody knows 18 wheelers tear up the roads. And if they're tearing up my roads, then that means that, that can, it can tear up my vehicle as well. So I, I am not really in agreements with having so many warehouses in the city of South Fulton. I feel like we're at capacity right now. Absolutely. <laughs> well, just to give the, the council a break, they're not actually in the city of South Fulton. <laughs> they just surround us. <laughs> <laughs> they just surround us. Um, give us, so you've been a resident of 15 years, correct? I've been in the area for about 15 years. 15 years. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned you would love to see and bring in like new restaurants, new shopping. How could we get more density? I would say we're, we're receiving density right now. Mm -hmm. But how do we get the upscale? How do we get the nice restaurants? How do we get the, the nice stores? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I think the first thing we need to do is before we can get those nice stores in here and before we can get people to believe to come into South Fulton to shop in South Fulton to build those stores and those restaurants, we need to reduce the crime rate. We need to make people feel safe to come in this area, safe to come eat, safe to come work and play and safe to shop. And I think once we focus on that, getting the restaurants in and getting the stores in would be an easy breeze because everyone would feel safe about coming into South Fulton. Good question. Good answer. Looks like we have another question in the chat. Mm -hmm. You mentioned this came from Kayla Lewis. You mentioned that you believe in collaborations. What mm -hmm. new collaborations do you plan to create with other departments within the city to impact residents? And do you already collaborate with our council members or active residents? Um, currently, I collaborate with some of the residents in other districts. Um, I don't collaborate with anyone within District 1 as of right now, but that will change. Um, what I do plan on doing to collaborate with others is to bring new ideas for the city of South Fulton. I want to um, be an impact for the city so that people can look at us in a different light. Um, currently, when I tell people I live in South Fulton, they turn their nose a little bit and be like, oh, I saw y'all on the news. I don't want that impact on us. I also want to collaborate with the school boards and I do want to collaborate um, with the school board so that we can figure out what are they doing in their school system because I know a lot of school systems have mentorship programs um, and I want to figure out what they're doing so that we can probably implement that with Parks and Rec so that I'll collaborate with Tenard and um, get, that, get that program going. I also want to do um, sit down with Chief Meadows so that we can go over the crime rate. I know I did um, go to a meeting that was held in District 7, if I'm not mistaken, and um, Officer Gibbons was there and it was some residents and some business owners there was upset about the break-ins and stuff that hadn't happened in their area. And I want to actually let the residents know how the police system work. Um, as we all know, they are short staff. And we all know that each area needs 18 beats. And that's not what we have right now. Um, the current employment rate is, is low. And they're supposed to have like 150 cops. And I want to allow residents to know that even though they're supposed to have 150 cops, that don't mean that 150 is out on the streets. You have, I want them to be aware that there's homicide, there's um, sexual assault, there's traffic, there's beat cops. So I do want to collaborate with the residents so they can understand how the police system work and how the calls are being made. And if it's a priority, where do they go first versus coming? If someone's at your back door, they're going to go there versus a fender bender. So I do want to collaborate with the residents because some of them, don't, at that meeting, I realized that some of them really don't understand how it actually works with the police department. That's a great answer there. If, oh, go ahead. Yeah, Ms. Right. Ms. Stingle, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, I've noticed uh, personally a lot of disruptions and unprofessional behavior during council meetings. If you're elected, number one, uh, would we see any of that type of behavior from you? And secondly, what would you do when you witness that type of behavior? 
Um, first things first, I feel like that if you're at a meeting, you're supposed to have everyone's undivided attention. I feel like it's very rude when um, the constituents and the residents come up to the podium and people are on their phones and people are fumbling on their laptops and playing around with paperwork. I feel like if a, a resident that voted you into office, whether they're in your district or not, you're supposed to give them your undivided attention so that they know that you are paying attention and you are listening to them. Um, I feel like that that should be something that's written in the charter so that residents can trust you and residents can actually believe in what you're standing for and believe in what you have, um, what you're there for. You're there for them and you're there to listen to them and hear them. And if you're being disruptive and walking around and getting up and fumbling with paper and I've seen them on phones texting, you're in a meeting, you're in a public setting, it's being filmed. That just looks unprofessional to me. We have another question from the chat. Looks like from iPhone. If elected, what would your first 100 days in office look like? First 100 days would look like to me, I would definitely want to find out what training can be done so that I can be well equipped for all the codes, everything that's going on. I would definitely want to know what was left off in the past. The first 100 days, I do plan on um, setting meetings with all of the HOA presidents so that I can sit and talk to them to find out what's going on in their area and what they need to be changed. Um, I would definitely, I would definitely going to have an open door policy. Um, they can call me, text me whenever if they have issues or whatever the case may be. I am one to, I don't like talking about issues pretty much over the phone. I'm one that want to sit in your face and say, hey, what can we do? Take notes and and move forward. I've always been that type of person. So my first hundred days would just be of me getting grabs of what's going on in the city and find out what um, extended training that I would need because there's a lot of codes and regulations that I would have to get brushed up on and find out about. So I would definitely want to do that because I don't want to give the public the wrong information. I always want to give them the right information when they come to me and ask questions. Absolutely. Another question from Sylvia McCoy. What steps could be taken to get a hospital in City of South Fulton? And how would you, as a councilwoman, help to facilitate that? Um, first thing I would probably do is probably want to have a meeting with the hospitals, the directors of the hospitals that are locally in Atlanta to figure out, you know, what's their like square footage and all of that to find out how the hospitals actually ran. Once that is done, I would definitely want to sit down and have a conversation with economic development to find out where we could put a hospital in the city of South Fulton that would be feasible for everybody. So I definitely want to, um, and talk to the residents as well to figure out where would you want a hospital at? How, where, where do you want to, how far are you willing to drive to get to a hospital if you have an emergency? So I would definitely put, put all that into play, but I would definitely have that, that first conversation would be other hospitals to see how they're ran. I know that they had a hospital years ago on Fabron Road, but that's in Atlanta, of course. Um, and I don't know if it's still up and running, but I would definitely want to figure out what we can do to implement that within the city of South Fulton and what area we that we can put it in where we can do a traffic study to make sure it won't be issues for emergencies, people coming in and out. So it would have to take a lot of research before that would have to be implemented. Absolutely. I like that you mentioned in your first 100 days to get your training. So yes. that follows up <laughs> with one of my questions and I asked with a, one of the other uh, previous candidates is that, as we know, you're coming in, you wouldn't have any experience. How would you gain, and I'll restate that when we became a city, no one had any experience. So what would you do to gain the experience and help yourself with those uh, 100 days? Um, what I would do is um, more than likely I would talk to um the city manager, Subedan, to figure out some some things. And then I will also try to talk to my colleagues and get some information from them to say, to say hey, I got this issue or this is going on. What did, what's, what's been y'all protocol or whatever the case may be. But I would definitely sit down and talk to my colleagues to see if we can come to an understanding so that we can get the proper training. 
I will say that um, when Linda Pritchard came on, it was very disturbing to me. I was at the council meeting and she didn't know how to use the cue and nobody was willing to show her how to do that. So that was kind of disturbing to me. And she said, well, nobody showed me how to do the cue. And I'm like, y'all are all colleagues working together for one city. So yeah, I would definitely, and I'm very upfront and I would definitely sit down with the mayor, of course, as well so that I would know what my rules and regulations is. And I would sit down probably with the city clerk and the city attorney. All right, unless we had a hand raised earlier. Yeah, Ms. Um, Linda Colbert, she's next. Yes, I did have my hand raised, but um, uh, I would like to uh, see how she feels about reaching across the board with the um, people like the mayor from the city of Atlanta, the mayor from Union City, the mayor from all the cities that surround our city to about talking to them about things that actually connect or almost butt into our city. They do. Uh, that need to be fixed and things that, uh, that to be fixed that will help us as a community as well as them as community. Like for instance, if the hospital that was on Fevron Road, which was a, a very good hospital when it was open, which was called Southwest Hospital at one time, and before that it was called, um, it was um, um, Catholic Hospital because the nuns were actually there. Um, anyway, that was a good hospital. That's where both of my children were born in that hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, if they could reopen that hospital and, and fix it up or rebuild the hospital or whatever to get it uh, to working as a, a working unit, that would be a perfect hospital to help yeah. out the city of Atlanta as well as our city because our city butts right into that hospital. Absolutely. Because, uh, it, it does. It from Walmart, which is right into right in the city of South Fulton and the neighborhood, which is right uh, down from there, uh, which is in the city of South Fulton. So if, if, if a lot of the things could be fixed just surrounding us, they will be less than a mile from where we are, you know, so and we wouldn't have to worry about, say, build one right, a brand new one right here in the city of South Fulton, but just fix some of the stuff that's around us. Absolutely. Thank I, you, Ms. Brenda bethune Colbert. Let me see if I can reiterate her question. <laughs> I think, you know, how could you work across the board uh, with other mayors from other cities that surround us, like City of Atlanta, Fairburn, um, Union City? I think that was the gist of her question earlier. And thank you so much for that summary and that statement as well. That was some good knowledge. Thank you, Brenda. I just want to say that um, just a little background about myself. My I my doctor for my 24 year old was at that hospital. I used to go there to see him when I had my son. Um, but he ended up moving and I had my son at a whole different hospital. But um to work with other cities, I think is very important because we're all working for the state of Georgia. I think that working with other cities and other mayors, I have asked the question um previously not with city council, but I have asked um, some other people that are in activists in the community and say, why don't we collaborate with College Park? Why don't we ever do anything with East Point or stuff like that? And I've been told that nobody wants to do anything with us because of the bad publicity that we receive. So I don't know how true that is, but I do want to, um, I do want to collaborate with other cities in the area that surround us because I do want to make the city of South Fulton better and let us have a better rep and a better name. So with that being said, I do plan on collaborating with East Point, College Park, Union City, and Fabron so that we can all be work together and collaborate and do some things together. Absolutely. Another question from the chat. You seem very passionate about the police department. You mentioned that the city is short staffed on officers. Do you, let me see. Do you have any ideas on how to increase the recruitment for new officers? Um, I have been looking into that. I, I do not have a solid answer right now. Um, I'm passionate about what will work for the city. 
Um, and with that being said, um, I do not have a solid answer for what I can do for recruitment. And that is mainly because some of the police have a bad rap and some of them don't, some people just don't want to be police officers um, because of what has been happening in the news and the media and so forth. So I'm not, I don't have a solid answer for you right now, but after I finish my research, who answered that question, I can email you and send you what I have and then we can go from there. Absolutely. That came from Lorraine's iPhone. Okay. Um, we have a hand raised, Ms. Gordon. Yes, I have a question. Um, if you talk about economic uh, development, mm -hmm. and we see the economic development on the north side, and I see how passionate the governor is as far as getting things done, the roads and so forth. If you had an opportunity to work to get to that level, how would you go about doing that so that we can have that same, that they would have the same passion on the south side as they would on the north? Um, what I would say, what what makes us different from the north side to the south side from where we're at, um, if you go to the council meetings on the north side, they show up in numbers. We show up in handfuls. That makes a big difference. That makes a big difference. You know, I get on next door and I see a lot of people complaining and saying what needs to be done. But I feel like if we show up in numbers, we can make a difference. And that's what I've always noticed with the north side versus the south side. And that's not just with the re with us getting restaurants. That's with the kids' education. That's with everything. You know, we have to show up in numbers and we have to come all with one agenda and not five people want to do this and five other people want to do that. We have to be on one accord and say, hey, we want this where we're at, too. We don't, we don't want to go to Alpharetta. We want to go to Cascade. And in order for us to do that, we have to come together as a community and everybody be on one page and one accord and say, hey, let's get this done. Let's go to these council meetings. Let's make a make a voice for ourselves. And that's how they got it on the north side. They the residents show up. They don't just sit online and, and talk about it. They actually show up to the meetings and and make a big fuss about it. So if we could do that, we can do the same thing that they do in Alpharetta. Thank you. From Kayla Lewis, how do you feel about the current sanitation and what would you have done better with the selection process and in, communi in communicating and informing residents? Um, with the communication as far as the sanitation goes, um, I do think that it could have been better. I think that it should have been um sent out to the residents a lot better than, than what it was. And I honestly feel like they should have allowed the residents to make the decision on who they wanted to spend their money on. And they did not do that at all. Um, I honestly think that I did go to a couple meetings in district one that they talked about sanitation, but it was more so them talking to the residents and not listening to what the residents wanted. So that was a big issue for me. Um, what I would have done differently is just fought for my fought for the city and fought for what they needed, not just for District One, but for everybody. Absolutely. How would you collaborate with um, I asked this previously? So you have the encumbrance; it's three of you running. Mm -hmm. You have the encumbrance, Dr. Roll, yourself, and you have your opponent, uh, Mrs. Harris. Mm -hmm. If you, for some reason, did not win this seat, how would you still collaborate with either? I will still work with them either or it doesn't me not winning the seat doesn't mean I lost because I'm here for the community. It's not just for a seat. So um, I would still work with both of them. Um, as of right now, I see Pam at the council meetings. I speak to her. You know, I just know that everybody got one goal at mine. And I hope that goal is working with the community. Um, I've spoken to Dr. Rao as well. I've even done a 5K with her once before. Um, with one of the businesses locally um, within our district. So I have no problem with working with anybody, whether I win the seat or not. My job is to be here for the community and do what's right for them. Absolutely. And you mentioned, let me see, Ron, do you have a question? I don't want to make sure I... No, I'm, I'm good. Okay, absolutely. You had mentioned before, I know your kids go to the schools here how do you support maybe 
would you like to see more charter schools here, additional schools um, being built? What would the school system look like in the district for district? Um, for district one, I do think that district one needs um, another high school. I do think that Westlake is overcrowded. Um, and that's not something that I can control. That's something that has to be done at the school board level. But I do think that um, the school systems here locally, um, I don't have a, a per se an issue. Um, I am involved with the school system, but I do think in bringing in more charter schools, I would have to weigh that with the residents. I wouldn't make that sound decision and say, hey, let's bring this charter school in because charter is better. I would have to weigh that with residents because everybody feels differently about public schools versus charter schools. Now, with the trash system, um, the sanitation and the trash, how would you incorporate? I know some residents would love to do recycling. Um, mm -hmm. My husband so, is one. <laughs> so how would you incorporate recycling? How would that look for uh, District 1 or even City of South Fulton? Um, I would probably, I know that the City of Atlanta do have a recycling um business a, a company that comes around and pick up their recycle i probably would do some research to figure out how we can get that implemented within the city of south fulton because my husband is an avid recycler person so um i would definitely do that not just for him but for other people that i do know that like to recycle so i definitely would do research before i roll anything out to anyone or bring it to anyone's attention because i want to be well versed on what i'm speaking about before i actually bring it up and say hey we need to do this and i would probably say my last question would be another real estate question i'm in real estate so i had to ask <laughs> we have so many new subdivisions going up and i think what's disheartening to me is to see the new communities come up but a lot of them do not have the amenities but they have that high hoa fees um, I do look at other neighborhoods across and I've traveled all over Georgia and you <laughs> see even the uh, active communities, which I say over 55 and you have other communities, preferably, I won't even say just the North side, even on the South side, probably like Peachtree city, they have a lot of the amenities that they are not building in this area. Is there anything that you, your thoughts on that? Um, I'm very disheartened with the HOA fees that are in these subdivisions and there's no basketball court, there's no swimming pool, there's no clubhouse. So if I'm paying that money, I definitely want to have the amenities to go with it. But I think that falls um, a lot on the developers when they bring the project to the city um, council and say, hey, we want to build this subdivision. We want X amount of houses. Um, so but they're not building accommodations for them to be paying those fees. Prime example, the Wallace Road um, situation, they wanted to build all these houses and I was sitting in the council meeting, I'm like, you're building it for 55 and older, but what do they have to do? There's no clubhouse there yet. They're not talking about a clubhouse. They're not talking about a pool or anything. So um, I just think that, that the HOA and building all these subdivisions and not enough amenities is not, is not working. I don't agree with it. And if we don't have the amenities in the subdivision and it looks like we're a quarter till, I'm going to start wrapping up. What about the amenities just for the community overall, like senior facilities, um, another maybe YMCA? What are your thoughts on that? I do think that we need some more senior um, facilities. I was going to, I, will, I, I do want to, I know that Sandtown is being remodeled and I do want to see if we can bring people in um, to do like line dances with the seniors. I know, like I said before, we did coffee and conversation and someone came in when we was leaving out and was teaching them line dancing. And I know that some seniors like to play bingo. They like to go out and play bingo. So I do want to bring some things in for the seniors to do so that it, they can have a way. I do know that there is transportation for them that charges, I think it's a dollar so um, we won't have to worry about transportation for them to get to and from where they're going. But I do want to implement some things with the parks and recs to bring some more activities in for the seniors. Absolutely. Ryan, you came off mute. Yeah, I did. And uh, I want to ask, not just as a candidate, but also just as a, a citizen of the city of South Fulton, what are the top three things that you think are needed in this city? The top three things. 
Um, the top three things I think that is needed in this city is um, great collaboration with each other. I think that the city needs a new face. Um, and when I say new face, I think that the city need a new face as far as city council all the way around. Um, I think that the city, people need to know that we, even though they say we are the blackest city in America, I think that we need to show them that we are well-educated just like every other city is. Um, those are my top three, three things that I would for the city of South Fulton. One last question, would you, from Ashanti Shine, will you advocate for renaming the city? <sighs> we will have to talk about this name. <laughs> the city of South Fulton um, is a staple, so we will have to really discuss it. I haven't put much thought into renaming the city. Um, I've been focused on my campaign, so I haven't really put much thought into that. But um, we can sit down and talk about it and see what happens. We can definitely sit down and talk about it and see what happens. Absolutely. I think that's a good question, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, it is what it is, as they say. All right, we're getting ready to wrap up. It is 845. I want to give you some time, at least a good five minutes to kind of go over anything you'd like us to know about you, what you would like to share, how we can get in contact with you, signs, do you need more help? What do you want us to know before you leave here about Mrs. Angel Gaines Dingle? Okay, you guys, I just want you guys to know that I am passionate about helping the community. Um, I used to be a foster parent. I'm no longer a foster parent because I ended up adopting me and my husband adopted a set of twins. Um, I'm currently a CASA with the state of Georgia. I will be sworn in at the end of the month, beginning of November. And um, what a CASA is, is a court appointed, um, court appointed advocate for children that are in the foster care system. So I, I'm not just doing this just because I'm running for city council. This has been a passion of mine to help the city out. I know that I will be new coming in. I'm a new face um, for some of, for most of you guys. Um, but I have been, I've always been the one that's been in the background doing the work because I didn't want to boost myself and brag about who I am. But I am passionate about everything that I tell you. Um, I do want to bring new ideas to the city of South Fulton. I do want to bring new faces in the city of South Fulton. Um, anybody that knows me, if you follow me on social media, anybody that knows me can tell you what I, when I stand on something, I'm standing on it firm and I'm believing that things can happen and that I can make things happen for you guys. I have not been in the city for 50 years. I have not been in the city for 20 years, but I've been here long enough to see what's going on and see what's happening within the city and what needs to be done and what needs to change. I also want to just say that, um, I am a mother of five. Um, my older kids are 25 and 24, 21. And then we have the twins, which are seven. I am a grandmother of three. Um, I've been involved with the school system since my kids were in school. As I've stated before, I've been on the PTA. Um, I've stated before, I've sat on panels to help hire principals, help hire head football coaches. Um, I'm currently in a non-collegiate sorority and I serve as a national compliance officer. Um, and I got that position because of who I am as an individual. I always give everybody the opportunity. I'm not, I don't judge anyone from whatever walk of life that they've been in. I just want to be here to serve you guys and all the way that I can do that is by winning you by winning your vote. Um, you can follow me on all social media platforms at Angel Gaines Dingle. Um, that would be on next door. That would be on Facebook. That would be on Instagram and Twitter. That would be on, um, lit yeah, that's all the platforms. Yeah. That would be there. Um, you can go to my website and read up on me, read about, you know, a little bit more of my background at vote for the number four angel gains dingle, um, dot com. Um, you can reach me, um, via, message you can um send me a message on facebook send me a message on, on next door i do respond back to messages i'm very big on that like I, I really believe in straightforward communication and i would just let you guys know what i don't know 
I will not give you a false answer and say, this is what's going to happen. I will research it before I give you that answer, because I want you to believe and trust in me. Thank you so much. And just to ask, because I'm going to put it in the chat here, the mm -hmm. website is voteforangelgamesdingle.com. That's correct. And it's the number four. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. It is in the chat for you all. All right, next we'll have Run close us out. Okay. And thank you, Ms. Gaines Dingle. That was very good. We thank you for uh, participating. And Thank you uh, for I, having me. Okay, our pleasure. Absolutely. And I'd like to remind everybody of early voting. It runs from October 16th through November 3rd, and election day is on November 7th. And regardless of who you vote for, please vote. We need you to vote and participate in government. Yoshina? Well, that's it. I think Ron wrapped it up very nicely. He gave us some facts about voting. I want to especially give a special thank you again to Mrs. Angel Gaines Dingle, uh, just more so for the opportunity uh, that you came tonight in allowing thank us you. to uh, also rectify not having you show on last <laughs> week. So thank you for that working fine. Us. Yes. Thank uh, you for having me. You're Thank you guys for all the questions. I really appreciate you guys staying on. I know it's been a long night. It has. And that's the other thing. Thank you to the residents. Thank you all for staying on. We will not have another double night. Um, <laughs> but thank you for staying on. Thank you for being engaged. And thank you for being here. If there are no further questions, we're going to go ahead and close you out and say, have a good night. All right. Thank you a lot. Y'all have a